So is is Netflix, um, a, like Netflix original films, are those just people maybe like they see an independent uh, director and they hire them and say, hey, well, we want you to make this film? Used to be like that. That's how it started off. Like, hey, you're a good filmmaker. Do you want to make a film for us? Mm-hmm. Now they're a production company and they have in-house staff, more or less. Like people want to be Netflix directors. They want to work for Netflix and and so I'm sure they hire a lot of outside people still, but they have a whole production department. So they're kind of like a studio in a they, sense they're now? They're 100% totally a studio. They're yeah. totally vertically integrated. They have all their development, production, everything. And then, of course, they've got the streaming service, so they're vertically integrated. They never have to deal with the outside world again, other than customers. They're, they're Not only are they a studio, Netflix, Netflix is the biggest studio now, by far. I mean, they're spending the most amount of money on new production. Wow. More than anybody. And do they still do... So they'll put those out on Netflix. Are they still going to do TV rights and things like that? Yeah. they'll pro- Maybe not as much them, not yet, but they own everything. That's their library. So that's their asset value of their company, that they have all this sort of built up entertainment value that at some point they can monetize if they want to. But right now, the best way to do it is to keep it exclusively on Netflix and draw the traffic there. But if things were to change and the world changed, maybe Netflix goes out of business, they still own the library and they could license it to some other platform or some other TV place or something like that. Because at the end of the day, it's about content. People want to watch good programming and they have created a lot of good programming. So they'll always be able to monetize it as long as people want to watch it. Primarily, it'll probably be on their platform, but it doesn't really matter because that's why they did it, so that they have this asset value, as we call it, so that they can do it elsewhere if they want to or do it for years and years and years on their own service or maybe create their own television stations or their own movie theater chains. I mean, Amazon got into the movie theater business, as you saw. They, I think they purchased you know, AMC or whatever. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So this is just more vertical integration mm-hmm. where you control the entire... Um, distribution channel. Wow, that's uh, that's real interesting. Mm-hmm. So, so independent fl- films are incorporated in Netflix. Not as much as they used to be. It's okay. getting tougher and tougher and tougher. So, the first year that I sold to Netflix was 2015. That year, they bought 900 independent films. They told me that. The second year was 2017. They bought 600. Then in 2019, they bought about 300. So it kept going down and down and down. And I don't, I haven't sold to them during the pandemic. So I'm not sure, but I'll bet you it's less than a hundred because they don't need them because they make them themselves now and they make bigger stuff. Well, and, and aren't they also like buying rights to old things? Yeah, they are. And they're buying rights to a lot of foreign stuff. I mean, look at the biggest show on Netflix is, is uh, the squid game, which is Korean. Oh. Yeah, so all of a sudden, you know, now they're looking at the whole world and and getting that show content. was huge, huge, yeah. biggest show, and it's 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 a Korean show dubbed in English, but yet it was their number one show. Wow! And a close second was uh, I forget what it's called. Um, yeah, the other Korean show um, with the ghost guys that come and Hell Hellbound, or I think it's called Hellbound. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know, so not, it's not just about American shows now; it's the whole world feeds wow. it but then again they, they they do have operations in like 160 countries i mean they are worldwide netflix mm-hmm. so lots of stuff that they show in the united states doesn't get shown elsewhere and lots of stuff that gets shown elsewhere doesn't get shown in the united states it's very territorial some things go worldwide well it kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier marketing it's they all put, they put squid game out there it's a sensation but they somebody had to make a decision to take a chance with that show in the united states mm-hmm. Because generally, American audiences don't want to watch dubbed Korean shows. Yeah. But this one they did. So somebody at Netflix made a very good call on that one. Now, had they not made a good call, they could have pulled it very quickly. But who knows how much money they spent to license it. But mm-hmm. it's probably a favorable deal, and it worked out really well. Do they have that in the contract? Like, okay, in a month, we can cut it and only pay you this much? I don't know, because... You know, the only contracts I know from Netflix are the ones that I get. Right. Um, so, but those shows are done at a much higher level. Who the heck knows? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's Netflix controls the narrative pretty well. The content creators don't say, hey, this is what you need to do. Netflix says, this is what we're going to do. It's just because they have the leverage right now. Mm-hmm. 
Wow, it, it'll be interesting to see how that changes over the years. Yeah, now we've said, talked a lot about Netflix, but it could have been any stream, big streaming company. We could have talked Disney+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, HBO Max, any of them. We just used Netflix as sort of the example because they are the biggest, you right. know, and the, the most robust for sure. But, but they're all like that. These, this conversation could have applied to any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot more to it than you thought, eh? I know. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy that we did this, Jeff. Yeah. And I appreciate you coming on. No, it was great to chat. And as you can see, I like to chat. I had a lot to say, but uh, but I'm glad you asked a lot of the right questions. We got to chat about a lot of stuff. So yeah, thank yeah. thank you for having me. I appreciate sure it. And maybe we'll have Larry, uh, Larry on next time. He would, I'm sure, <laughs> love to do it. But his perspective would be a lot different than mine. Yeah. You might enjoy that <laughs> yeah. even more. Appreciate it, Jeff. Okay. Thanks All a right. lot, Michael. Thank you. All right.